Today we will tell you about the craziest project in China. Due to the lack of fresh water, the Chinese intend to lay what is probably the world's largest water pipeline from Lake Baikal to the very center of China. According to the calculations of Chinese scientists, the water in Baikal should be enough to provide more than half a billion citizens of the Celestial Empire with it. But wouldn't that be the end of the cleanest, largest, and deepest lake in the world? Baikal is the deepest lake on the planet and one of the largest reservoirs of fresh water. Baikal is also home to a great diversity of magnificent flora and fauna, most of which are found nowhere else in nature. But in recent years, Lake Baikal has come under serious threat. And it's not because of environmental issues, which the Russian government isn't handling in the best way. No matter how incredible it may sound, but Baikal can simply be drunk. As part of increasing cooperation between Moscow and Beijing, the Chinese government wants to use the blue eyes of Siberia, as tourists call Baikal, to solve the problem of fresh water in its Gansu province, part of which is located in the Gobi Desert. And these plans have been successfully put into practice. The feasibility of such construction has been confirmed by scientists and experts. The tunnel should be at least 2,000 kilometers long, making it the largest such project in world history. But is there any chance of Baikal being drained after the implementation of such a project? First, let's go back to 2015, when Russian President Vladimir Putin, at a meeting with Chinese leader Xi Jinping, announced the start of extensive mutually beneficial cooperation between Moscow and Beijing. This project was given special priority because Chinese investment helped bring the Russian economy, which had been badly battered by the conflict with Ukraine, as well as international sanctions, which at the time had not yet reached the terrifying proportions that we see now. However, it would be foolish to believe that Beijing has decided to invest tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars in Russia solely out of a sense of brotherly love and mutual assistance. The Celestial Empire clearly expects to profit from every yuan invested. And one of its priority interests is Russian Siberia, and of course, Lake Baikal. It is known that back in 2015, a Chinese company located in the city of Zhenjiang signed an agreement on the lease of Baikal lands. The agreement provided for the sale of land for 49 years ahead, with an area of 115,000 hectares, which the Chinese plan to use for their own purposes for the cultivation of rice and other agricultural products. But the matter was not limited to land leasing. The main goal of the Chinese Baikal project is to install a water pipeline on the lake through the Mongolian lands and then through the Gobi Desert. The final destination is the capital of Gansu province, the Chinese suburb of Lanzhou. This project was included as the main point of the agreement in 2015. The project was developed by Chinese specialists and scientists, and from a theoretical point of view, this development is quite realistic. That is, it is not technically difficult to build such a water pipeline, and there will be money for it too. For China, this is a very important project that will help solve the problem of fresh water shortage in the country. In addition, the Chinese promise that this project will be a profitable business for both China and Russia itself. Beijing's investors are planning to take a leading position in market relations, implying the sale of drinking water, which will be transported from Baikal not only to China, but also to other countries. In the prospects of the future, they are going to pump out about 2 million tons of water per year, and the trademark called the Well of the Earth has already been patented in many European countries in two languages. Russia also expects to receive a good percentage of the sale of water, arguing that the funds received will be used to restore and develop the infrastructure of the Siberian regions. However, this raises many doubts. But what kind of profit are we talking about? If we consider the project of a giant water pipeline from a scientific point of view, discarding all the emotions and arguments of the critics of the project like, such a project should not exist, simply because it should not exist, you can come to interesting conclusions. The length of the future water pipeline, taking into account the characteristics of the terrain and the most convenient route for laying, will be more than 2,000 kilometers. According to experts, to pump water with a volume of 4 cubic meters per second through standard pipes, 1.4 meters in diameter, such a distance would require power comparable to that of a small hydroelectric power station. That is, the main operating costs will come from paying for electricity. It is not difficult to calculate the approximate cost. The average tariffs in the region where Baikal is located are about 2 cents per kilowatt per hour at today's exchange rate. Therefore, for the pumping of 1 cubic meter of water, energy companies will have to pay a little more than 60 cents, and the price of 1 cubic meter of fresh water, not desalinated but natural in the world markets, reaches $2.5. Thus, it is possible to roughly calculate the profitability of the Baikal China Water Pipeline project. Only in this scheme there is a but. The number 7, namely 7 days. Water with a speed of 4 meters per second will travel in the pipe exactly 7 days. 
Will it be as clean as when entering the pipe? And will its unique, healing properties remain? So far, the answer to this question can be obtained only theoretically. However, the inhabitants of the Celestial Empire are not so simple. They have already prepared for a bad solution to this issue. In the event that the properties of water are lost during transportation, the Chinese have already developed a plan B. And not just developed, but almost completely implemented. We are talking about the Aqua Sib Company, which despite any obstacles, is already building its powerful plant right on the shores of Lake Baikal. The main shareholders of this plant are Chinese investors, and the main activity of the enterprise will be bottling the life-giving Baikal water in bottles right on the shore of the lake. And despite the numerous legal violations in the registration of construction, and even the decision of the court prohibiting the construction of the plant, after the appeal, all bans were lifted, and the Chinese actively continued construction of the plant. This once again clearly proves that the sale of Baikal water to China is approved at the highest level, and is under the personal control of the Russian government. In addition to the pipeline and bottling, there is also a third scheme for taking Baikal water. This is the so-called rail water pipeline. It is supposed to transport water in special tanks by rail, stretching the water main for a distance of about 1,200 kilometers. After seven years of operation, it is possible to reach a net profit of several billion dollars a year by supplying 40 million cubic meters of Baikal water abroad. Moreover, unlike the ordinary water pipeline, water delivery in tanks will not affect its unique properties in any way. Another indirect confirmation of the Chinese appetite for Lake Baikal is the fact that since February 2022, the Chinese media began to massively publish materials, whose general meaning is reduced to approximately the following. In ancient times, these lands were known as the Pastures of Su Wu, and today they are famous as the Blue Eyes of Siberia. The largest freshwater lake on Earth, Lake Baikal, is closely intertwined with the Chinese people and continues to be so to this day. You must agree that the rhetoric is very much like pure propaganda. So, although not so obvious, but the threat of the so-called annexation of Baikal and even in combination with the agreement signed in 2015, is a very serious lever of pressure on the Russian government. And it is likely that the pipeline in Gansu province, perhaps with some delays, will still be built after bypassing legal formalities. It will be a truly grandiose project, which the world has never seen before. It is worth noting another important fact. The water level in Baikal is now 456 meters, according to the tidal datum system. According to the decree of the Ministry of Ecology, the water level in Baikal, in order to maintain a normal ecological situation, must be maintained in the range from 456 to 457 meters. As we mentioned earlier, the pipeline project is intended to combat drought and a shortage of drinking water in Gansu province. This means that it is unlikely that the Chinese will keep a close eye on maintaining the water level in the lake. It remains to be hoped that for the sake of the Chinese, for the sake of implementing their global plans, they will keep Lake Baikal intact and will not drink it to the bottom. And many more generations will be able to admire the blue eyes of Siberia. Write in the comments, what do you think of this global project of China and how do you rate its prospects? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Karo Show channel. Also watch our previous videos. See you later.